Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the next episode of the Frisco Report. We have a lot of news and topics to discuss today. So, without further ado, guys, let's get right into it. Cat mode time, shark tooth mode. Boom, we're in it. All right, Mike. So, let's, let's do it. Cowboys have an off day today. Uh, Wednesday looks like it'll be when these guys start, you know, examining the roster a little bit closer. Um, so, today, we're going to talk about a couple of the final observations from camp, um, th- things that we're, that we're looking at, uh, you know, the, the shape of the roster. And we're also going to take a look at top five moves under, ty- uh, under Mike McCarthy. All right. So lots to unpack today. Lots of good news and, uh, and things like that. I am getting a report here, Mike. Uh, it's coming in right now. Do have breaking news. Do have breaking news here. All right. We have a projected winner here. Coming in, 99% of the expected delegates have voted. Noah Brown looks like he's going to be your number five wide receiver. Okay. So Cedric Wilson, number four. Noah Brown, number five. Okay. So that's 99%. This could change, but it looks like he's got that number five. Roster spot locked up. Will the Cowboys go six deep, Mike? What do you think about this? It's hard to say if they'll go six deep because, you know, just Sunday I talked about the bubble players. and I talked about Devin Smith really, you know, not really making any noise or really taking advantage of opportunities. And, uh, you know, I said that he could be a, my bubble player, and it looks like he is, Noah Brown, really stepping it up. You know, just when you want to write off a certain player – just write them off, came to the curb, maybe practice squad. They step up, and that's exactly what Noah Brown's doing here, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I think he was uh, two feet in in the grave, but not completely in there. He was able to pull himself out, a virtual phoenix rising from the ashes. Noah Brown, that's, that's pretty Resurrection. Awesome. Resurrection, man. So it's, it's a great story, you know. Um, you, you got a pool for the guy, Ohio State Buckeye, former teammate of Ezekiel Elliott. So, you know, he reshaped his body. You know, you mentioned that last week, Mike, that uh, you know, Noah Brown has reshaped his body. He's leaned out. He doesn't look like the tight end hybrid that people were wanting to peg him as. That was never going to happen. But, you know, to look like a receiver showing great catch ability, catch radius, able to make, you know, uh, toe line uh, end zone, red zone, touchdowns in, in camp. So good good there. We'll see if they go six deep. But uh, Noah Brown looks like he's going to round it out there at, at number five wide receiver, Mike. So interesting news coming into my ear. Yeah, we can confirm that. Okay. Let's go ahead, Mike, and, and cover some of these, these observations. And really – we're gonna just we're gonna go off of Todd Archer as, as a little bit of an outline, okay? <laughs> and and this this here is going to be okay. So Todd yeah. Archer, let's let's go through these notes here. Good to see Tyron Smith, Lyle Collins back in the fold, getting teamwork. Not stunning to see Dak Prescott did not receive did not have to run for his life in the ta- with those tackles out there. So that's really good. Death is always a concern on the line, but that's an every team issue, not just in Dallas. So, yeah, man. So they're back in the fold. Tyron Smith, uh, Lyle Collins, they'll be good to go rock and roll against that Rams game, Mike. So good news there. Good observation from Todd Archer. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm going to talk about the offensive line real quick because, yeah. you know, the, the wide receiver course amped up. Tie it in. You can put some question marks there. I get it. Running back, locked up. And uh, the offensive line is, is the huge question mark. You know, Mitch Hyatt t- tore his ACL, so he's out, which, you know, I called him Chaz Green Jr. Maybe I shouldn't have went there. But this offensive line is really the make or break of this football team, of this offense. And uh, it's really important that these guys stay healthy. Um, yeah, we might be able to lose Tyron Smith. I mean, he averages like three games a year now. But you can't lose Lyell and Tyron. Like, that's not good, you know, in, in that tackle spot. So, Yes, there's other other leagues have this same or other teams in the league have this same issue, but I'm telling you, this is the make or break of this football team is this offensive line. It is. I, I totally agree, Mike. It is make or break. It's the Achilles heel. Okay. You, you dip this team into the river of sticks, 
but the Achilles that is exposed is that offensive line. So, you, yeah, you can incur major injuries there uh, anywhere. You know, your tackles especially, I think that's that's really where you're going to get into some issues if if these guys miss any significant time. Let's knock on wood, everybody out there. Appreciate everybody that's out in the chat box. Everybody's joining us live. Lots of content to cover through. All right, but great take there, Mike. Let's get to a second part here. Lane Vanderish is ready for the season. He was salty Monday from the start to end of practice. He might have been the best defender for the Cowboys. The neck problem didn't appear to be an issue in camp, but let's see what happens in less controlled environment. Yeah, I think that's where we're at with, with Vanderish, right? So it looks like the neck is holding up in practice sessions, 7-on-7, 11-on-11. Seven seven, 11 11. But what, what Archer's saying is, let's see what happens in the regular season when this is another opponent across from you, right, Mike? So what's your thought here on Leighton Van Der Esch going into the season? You know, I that interview, I think he did like two interviews. It was the very first the, the very first interview in training camp that he did. I mean, the guy looked real serious. And Leighton Van Der Esch is a real, you know, uh, peachy guy, you know, very happy, very optimistic. But something in this interview, Joe, I liked. It was an attitude that I've never seen from Leighton Van Der Esch. And uh, he was telling the reporters flat out, it's behind me. There's no reason to talk about it. And, uh, and I like that. I really do. And, you know, he, he got a good pop on Tony Pollard uh, a week ago. Um, but like he said, a, in less controlled environment, when, when guys are going 100 miles an hour, when it's really competitive, um, I, I want to see him. And I think he needs that confidence hit. Maybe he got it in training camp. Maybe not. Um, but I like the attitude. I like the swagger 55 is bringing to us. Yeah, for sure. That'll be the real tell of the tape once we see Leighton Van Der Esch smack people left and right in the Rams game. So that'll be the best tell there. Uh, Todd Archer's next uh, observation here. Some 55-man roster thoughts. I could cut this team down to 39 players if need be, and that's not meant as a bad thing. They have position flexibility with number of players still keeping three quarterbacks but going with two running backs, 10 offensive linemen, 10 defensive defensive linemen, five wide receivers, three tight ends, six linebackers, 11 DBs, three special teams players. So, Archer, I, I you know, the, the numbers, they look good there. I'm going to have my final uh, roster projection here uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday, everybody, so be sure to check back on that. But, Mike, He's going 11 deep here on DBs. That looks pretty deep there. Uh, any of these numbers kind of stand out to you as far as what Archer's thinking here on the 53 man? No, actually, this is uh, this is about what we talked about on the roster projection. You know, get players getting projected in last week. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is pretty fair. You know, 10-0, uh, 10 D-line, 11 DBs. I mean, this is pretty spot on. Yeah. The only the the only thing where I could see a number shift might be the eleven DBs and five wide receivers. I think they're going to go five, and like we just said, Cedric Wilson four, Noah Brown five, Vince O'Brien uh, has a little injury, but looks like he's going to be okay. He's able, he'll be able to come back in a couple of weeks. So I'm kind of thinking they don't go six deep there. They're going to maybe go with uh, CJ Goodwin as as an extra DB. I'm thinking that's why he's going eleven deep here. Because you know, of special uh, teams. Special teams, because Vince O'Ryan was that special teams ace type of guy. So Goodwin might slip on, but uh, this 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 roster will, will remain fluid. You know, if you're one of these guys on the very edge after waivers, you could be gone again. So you know, uh, with this roster, you got to give it a couple of days to really, really settle down because the cuts will come, waivers, and then you know somebody might be available. You know. Maybe maybe you can improve somewhere that you didn't think you were going to be able to improve. So it'll be fun to watch. Todd Archer, interesting take here. I don't think Ha Ha Clinton Dix is on the bubble, but his guarantee was two point two five million dollars. The Cowboys gave Jasper Brinkley two million a few years ago and walked away from him on the final cuts. Yeah, so if anybody remembers Jasper Brinkley, linebacker, they brought him in here, two million dollars, didn't even make the team. I know that they've actually had this with, with other players as well. The, um, another safety they brought in here. A lot of people were on, were on that bandwagon, ended up not even making the team. So, Mike, Clinton Dix, do you think he's a bubble player? 
Mm. You know, with Xavier Woods going down and going to be out a couple of weeks, I'm going to go ahead and say no. But yeah. if Xavier Woods was fill, uh, was fully healthy, absolutely, he, he would have been a bubble player. And could, I don't even know who Jasper Brinkley is. <laughs> yeah, he, he, was, he was a linebacker. I think he spent time with the Bills, you know, but this was this was a couple of seasons ago. I, I remember the player, and I think he actually played with uh, Minnesota as well uh, mm. for a bit. So, yeah, interesting to see what what, what they do there. I'm, I totally agree with you. Uh, Xavier Woods dinged up. You got to have some depth there, veteran leadership. Uh, but this does highlight the uncertainty of safety. And, and I think this is why you're going to continue to see the conversation here and there about Earl Thomas and, and these types of things. This is why I, in my very first 2021 mock draft, I do cover free safety out of TCU. Okay, so make sure you guys check out that video. My first 2021 two-round mock draft, I do go free safety because the position is still unsettled, Mike. I mean – Clinton Dix, they're talking about Darian Thompson, you know, kind of even out playing him uh, for long term. I'm not really feeling that. You know what I mean? Are you, talk- are you talking about free safety or strong safety? Free safety. Xavier Woods position. Now, Xavier is, is a strong. Clinton Dix is free safety. Really? Yeah. Let's go to the next one here. <laughs> Tard Archer. Best player on the offense this camp. Hard to say. Maybe Zach Martin. Maybe Michael Gallup. Whenever you don't say Prescott or Elliott, that raises eyebrows. But it's not a knock on what they did. They look ready to go, Mike. So best offensive player in camp, do you go with Zach Martin or Michael Gallup? Or do you have somebody else, Mike? Let's see. Best players in camp, hard to say. Zach Martin. We got Michael Gallup. Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to say the best player to have a camp. I'm not going to go with any of these guys. I'm going to say um, the best player to have a camp would be Demarcus Lawrence. The guy, you know, he's ch- switching up technique. He's uh, he's doing everything right. You know, when I hand in the dirt, the, the two technique, I mean, he, I think he's had a really good, impressive camp. And he got s- some really good pass rushers to go with them and dominate. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Demarcus the Tank Lawrence. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Um, yeah, for me, Zach Martin is always the old, you know, Mr. Dependable. I think he's the new, you know, uh, gold jacket kind of player on this team. You know, we talk about gold jack wit. I think we're now – Zach Martin is in that conversation. Just all pros season after season. Um, so that's that's not really a surprise. For me, I do like Michael Gallup, though. I think this guy is really coming to his own. Mike McCarthy has described him as a number one receiver, that he could be a number one. And uh, that's how he sees them. So, uh, you know, this team is looking really good, Mike. Offensively speaking, they're looking good. Um, now, they did press, you know, the, these guys about what's the deal with Amari Cooper, you know, and they're kind of – everybody's kind of saying, oh, it, it's just some rest and this and that. But uh, the fact that you're starting to hear a little bit rumblings here and there, we'll see what this – we'll see what it looks like during the season. But, yeah, man, great offseason by these guys, Zach Martin. Gallup really looking the part. Let's get that guy a second contract. I think you got to keep Gallup moving forward, man. Yeah, you you have to. I mean, Amari Cooper's only locked in really for two years. Yeah, so right? yeah, it's basically yeah, basically a two year extension when you break it down for sure. And that could come into play. That very well could come into play. So let, let's let's get a couple of uh, Lombardis within that window. All right. Appreciate everybody out in the chat box. Salute to everybody. The Lunatic. See you out there, baby. Dallas Cowboys 1980. Cowboys legend 27 in the chat box as well. See everybody out there. We'll get to some comments and questions here in a bit. Uh, Mike, now what we're going to go through are top five moves from Mike McCarthy. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you five here. Um, you can, you know, if you agree or if you have a different top five, definitely chime in. We'll, we'll break this down, okay? So let's get to the first one here. Top five moves from Mike McCarthy in his first year as a Dallas Cowboys. Let's break it down, everybody. My first one is going to be the hiring of Rob Davis, the assistant head coach to Mike McCarthy. Mainly this guy was brought in primarily as – 
you know, a guy that uh, leads men and grooms them, you know, on and off the field. That's a speciality. That's what he did before coming on to the Cowboys. And before that, he did work with Mike McCarthy. So there's a working relationship. But um, I think this was a really good hiring by Mike McCarthy to really, you know, bridge that gap between players, coaches, and the front office. Rob Davis, I think, is going to be an in integral part of, you know, this uh, – of the Cowboys moving forward and you know, whether that's the uh, social in injustice and these kinds of things, you know, uh, talking with the players front office, these get these guys locker room pH balance. Mike I always talk about this. Is this part of the reason why we haven't seen Earl Thomas in here? Is he a cancer? Is he an Antonio Brown? You know, you, you just don't know, but I think my McCarthy is really leaning on Rob Davis's expertise in that regard. So he's got to go, with his guy, Mike. So that's uh, one of my top five hires for Mike McCarthy. What, what's your thoughts on Rob Davis, Mike? Yeah, Robert Emmett Davis. I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, you know, he, he it's there to mentor players. You know, like like you like you talked about. Um, I mean, he's really coming in here with the right attitude. He knows how to run an organization. He's did it for many teams. And uh, it's just that extra piece that players can go and and talk to and you know get some personal help and on the field help. Yeah. Yeah. Great addition there. I, I love that move there by, by Mike McCarthy. Um, the second, my second favorite one here is going to be another hiring, I guess you could say, and that's going to be of uh, coach John Fossil, Mike. And the reason why I have him on my list is because dead last in special teams last season, he had to bring in somebody in here that had, you know, the skins on the wall. And you talk about John Fossil, uh, part of some some pretty good, you know, teams over the, over the last couple of years over his career. And I think you get an instant boost in a special teams here by hiring John Fossil. I really liked this move early. What's your thoughts on John Fossil, Mike? Cowboys were 32nd in special teams. And, uh, and that's sad. And, uh, you know, John Fossil always had a top 10 special teams unit. And, I mean, because that can make, him, make or break your football team. I and mean, the guy plays with passion. He loves, he, he loves ball. Um, you know, he, he, he makes the most out of everything. He was an interim head coach there for a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I, like, I like his attitude. I like what he can do. I mean, the guy is the, probably one of the best, if not the best, special teams coach in the league, probably in history. Yeah, yeah, one of the best in the league for sure. Uh, great take there. Now, my number three, top five move under Mike McCarthy. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some players now. I love this pick here. Don Terry Poe, your defensive tackle, nose tackle, very versatile. You know, he'll play in the 4-3. It's a one tech, can be, can be that nose tackle in a 3-4 hybrid alignment. So it gives you a lot of versatility. Uh Pretty good veteran leadership as well. Don Terry Poe, big man, you know, really is going to help clog up those gaps uh, with him and what you're hearing from Tristan Hill and Navelle Gallimore. Uh, that middle, that defense should be improved from from past seasons. So I really like the signing of Don Terry Poe early in the, under Mike McCarthy's offseason. What, what's your thoughts on Poe, Mike? 6'3", 346. I like it. This this three hundred and forty six pounds. Uh, that that's the baconator, Joe. We've been you know talking about all off season. Uh, yeah. Huge. This is and you know yeah you know um, he has you know twenty and a half ha half sacks. He has you know tons of tackles. I mean his resume is clean. I like his resume. Uh, he's pretty consistent uh, for the most part. I mean he'll he'll get you at least two to three sacks a year. So he's he's consistent. Um, and that that's I mean, you really upgraded the three tech with with this signing here. Yeah, man, for sure. Definitely the baconator, double baconator in this case, 346. That's some beef. Uh, hard to move that out of the way. You're gonna have to go around if you can. So I think it really helps out your ends. Your linebackers are gonna, you know, be able to swoop in and seek and strike those uh, A and B gaps. Like I said, Jalen Smith. Uh, we'll have more freedom to roam around and uh, really be more attacking. So I love that move, man. I, I think getting Don Terry Poe in here, 
is a good start under Mike McCarthy's first season as a Cowboys head coach. I had a double take on that weight. I was like, did I just say 346? This man's a beast. Yeah. My number four uh, favorite move of Mike McCarthy in this offseason is another player, and we're going to go with no other than our first-round draft pick, C.D. Lamb. Okay? I think uh, grabbing him, you know, getting him there at 17 was destiny. <laughs> okay? You know, no, no, none of us really had him being mocked. I, I think some people had him mocked here and there in, in some of these uh, draft simulators. But, uh, you know, in some cases, you didn't think that was going to be a realistic thing for C.D. Lamb to fall to 17 of the Cowboys, right? So um, a lot of people, myself included, were looking more at the other players that might be there, like a C.J. Henderson. Uh, Caleb on Chase on was another one that, that a lot of people had mocked there. But when he, gave, when he came to the Cowboys and Mike McCarthy in this front office, they pulled the trigger on CeeDee Lamb. Wow. I mean, instant uh, injection of excitement and uh, everything into this offense, into this team, Mike. What's your thoughts on CeeDee Lamb being Mike McCarthy's first pick in the first round under his uh, first season here? It's electrifying, you know, because – Jerry Jones confirmed everything uh, Sunday night. They had LSU, Caleb, Caleb on chase on right there, right? And uh, they, they, they seen C.D. Lamb still sitting there. And before the draft, you know, Mike McCarthy said, if somehow, if some way C.D. Lamb is there, we got to take him. I changed my vote. And uh, the, the guy's wearing 88. This guy's going to be a stud. And uh, it's another weapon for Dak Prescott. It's another weapon for us to go – go win us a championship yeah and, and all reports all indications are cd lamb has been tearing it up in camp uh just hit the ground running like virtually hit the ground running and uh you know it's uh and it does protect you if there is an issue somewhere down the line with amari cooper you are protected there because cd lamb can play on the outside play on the inside and they are going to move these guys around to keep them uh guessing so cd lamb really great pick really you know, it could be 40 burger season for the Dallas Cowboys in this offense. So uh great pick there by Mike McCarthy. That's why I have him here number four on his top five moves in his first year. So looking good, looking good. All right. And uh let's get to my final number five top move by Mike McCarthy. Drum roll. Uh, yeah, drum roll. It's gonna have to be it's another player, and we're gonna go with Everson Griffin, all right. Getting Everson Griffin on this team when we did uh, really solidified this defensive line, especially on the edge uh, as we did. You know, I did like the Allen Smith on getting him on April Fool's Day. I did like that move, but I loved getting Everson Griffin here to really stack more talent. You know what I mean? So coming fresh off last season, eight sack season, you know what you're getting with him, multiple Pro Bowls. Uh, a captain there for the, you know, uh, the Vikings defensive line. The players uh, have already, you know, said that they, they really like what Everson Griffin is. And like I said, he gives you that edge. He's a He's got some edge to him, <laughs> right, Mike? So what's your thoughts on the Everson Griffin signing? They really wanted him. You know, he was linked to the Cowboys for months during this offseason. The Seahawks were playing. The Vikings were trying to get him back. And uh, the Cowboys came to the back door and kidnapped him, and now he's wearing a star. Uh, you know, this he I think he said on Instagram, this is where he wants to finish his career, right here in in, in Dallas. And so uh, it's great. I mean, I mean, you hit you hit everything on the head, Joe. The the agility, um, the hand moves, the pass rush skills. You know, um, not giving up. Down for down for down for down. You know, when your lugs are. When your lungs are pink and you got to go get you a sack in the fourth quarter, I believe Everson Griffin can get that done for us. A clutch rusher. Uh, he he really is that. He really yeah. is. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point, man. When, when people are huffing and puffing for that, that, you know, that final gas in their tank, Everson Griffin has shown that capability to really do that, um, you know, it, it, but he made the right move. You know, he voided his contract to, to get out there into the market. Cowboys swooped in at a very good deal, you know, 
getting him at the price tag that they got him for in a one year deal. Um, it's almost like this defense is is uh, it's all in, you know. You know, obviously we we have the Earl Thomas still out there and that kind of thing. But right now, let's just say he's not even in the in the, in the picture. This defense is ready to rock and roll, Mike. I, I feel really good about what they've done in the off season, revamping that defensive line. It's it's you know taking a a really big revamping. It it's totally different, right? So, um, and yeah, go ahead. Just just get props to Joe real quick. Um, you know, all off season, e- even before free agency and the draft, right here on the Frisco report, Joe was saying, don't settle. You know, if Byron wants to go get paid somewhere else, let him go get paid. You know, if Robert Quinn wants to go somewhere else and get paid, let him get paid. We got to get better. And with patience and time, we're here talking about this defense can really be probably top five, if not top three, even with the people and pieces that we lost. Joe was telling everybody this whole offseason, do not settle, let everything fall in place, and look at this defense now. Look at this offense now. It's mind-blowing. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. Yeah, shout-out to you, bro. Appreciate that. And, and it is. It's what every fan should uh, aspire to want, you know, to continue to get better. Don't don't settle on, on a, an aging veteran if that's the case. I mean, we all have affection for players, and we hate to see them leave or get released, but – you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you can get better, you can get better. So that that's my mindset, and I actually do believe that. And the Cowboys really did that this offseason. You know, that they really – you know, Mike McCarthy has really put his thumbprint on this team uh, up and down the roster, e- even with the no numbers in the scrimmage. <laughs> uh, very uh, – he's a tactician. You know, he's, he's, there's a lot of strategy with Mike McCarthy. You Quarterbacks know, already, wearing red jerseys. Yeah, you, you already see it. You already see it. That's probably something that, you know, unfortunately Garrett would, would never even think of. You know, he was still coaching learning, unfortunately. Mike McCarthy, not the case. You know, he comes out um, with a lot of experience. He's got the skins on the wall. And uh, Jerry Jones said that uh, when he talks to him, he knows he's talking to a head coach. I mean, that's cool. that's a pretty pretty big deal right there, man. Just – just everything about Mike McCarthy, man. You know, yeah, we just did the five editions, but I mean, everything about Mike, the guy means business. You know, everything we're going to do is about winning the players respecting him from the start. You know, there was reports that Dak Prescott was a little sad that, you know, Jason Garrett, you know, left, but Dak Prescott really has a guy that can teach him. I mean, look at all the footwork drills, the pocket awareness drills that they're doing. We've never seen that. In in the four years that Dak Prescott's been quarterback, you know, now he's going to his fifth year and he's learning this stuff and it's only going to help. Mike McCarthy's, this five, there's a lot more and there's going to be a lot more in the future. Yeah. Yeah. No no doubt about that, man. I'm I'm ready to get this thing going. Cowboys, uh, we're under two weeks away from the start of the season. We're going to head on the road, game one. 13 days. Against the Rams in SoFi Stadium, baby. No uh, that will be a stadium that will have fake pumped in noise. Um, so that, that'll be interesting to see how they do it. But that's what, part of the reason why the Cowboys did that in their scrimmage. You know, they pumped in the, the artificial sound so they could kind of get a feel of uh, what it's going to be like. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, game shapes out. But uh, very pumped about it. <laughs> Everything uh, McCarthy's done looks really good. Mike, do you have any honorable mentions as far as honorable mention moves that that re- that you really liked from Mike McCarthy this offseason. Yeah, bringing in Mike Nolan, letting Chris Richard go, you know, getting that scheme out of here, bringing in a whole new entire scheme, a disguised look. You know, I mean, that was one of the first pieces that he that he brought in and keeping Kellen Moore at the offices coordinator position. Kellen Moore has a lot of promise of calling football plays, designing football plays and uh, you know, keeping Kellen Moore uh, especially for a young quarterback like Dak Prescott, who's all he known was this guy. Um, th- those top two are tied for me in honorable mentions. What about you? Yeah, really good. Really good. Uh, honorable mention for me, you know, obviously would be Alden Smith. Um, you are hearing some good things from him. So the uh, the rust and that kind of thing didn't look like it was a, it was a big issue. So uh, I do like that. I do like that very much. All right. Uh, but uh those are those are my favorite moves. The the Clinton Dix, that's that's a work in progress to be determined. You know, obviously he was a first round pick under Mike McCarthy at Green Bay. 
but he kind of bounced around after that, you know, Bears, Redskins. Now he's here with the Cowboys. So there's a reason for that. All right. He didn't look so, good with the Redskins either. We torched him. Yeah, we, yeah, we sure did. So well, we'll see. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that one there. Um, let's see what everybody's got going on. Rocking here in the comments. We do appreciate everybody that's in the comments. And we'll take some questions, guys. If you've got any comments or questions, we'll go over them here real quick with you guys. The lunatic right off the bat. Don't forget letting 82 go. Love wit, but it was time for a change. You got any commentary yeah. for that one? The lunatic. Don't forget letting 82 go. Love wit, but it was time for a change. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, that was a move there. Whether they let him go or if it was uh, wit wanting to go on, on his own. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that move had to happen. You know, I think that uh, writing was on the wall for Wit, <laughs> new regime here. They want to go younger there with Jarwin. They gave him the extension. So, yeah, there's definitely something to that for sure, Mike. What's your thoughts? Yeah, you know, on Sunday, uh, right here on the first score report, I talked about Wit and leaving and giving that opportunity more snaps to Dalton Schultz, who had a horrible camp to start. But it's not how you start; it's how you finish, and the way he's finishing. Is it? He's trying to get that number two, that tight end number two spot. Blake Bell being number three. So, um, you know, Jason Witten opened a lot of doors. Leaving opened a lot of doors. Dalton Schultz, number eighty-six, is taking advantage of it. Yeah, yeah. Dalton Schultz looking more like a number two on that depth chart, uh, making moves, man. That's what you want to see out of Schultz. You know, time to step that up. So, I, I do like that. David G, Leonard Fournette for Bruiser back. Let's make it happen. For Okay, so the backstory on this, why he was released, uh, just wasn't getting along with staff. Heard he was overweight, not in shape, not good, man. I'm passing on that. And nobody has picked him up yet, Mike. Well. Nah. Uh, passing on, on him. Passing on him hard. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll take Tony Pollard over him all day. And give him to Flash Lightning and Thunder. And Thunder, as we say. Here we go. Will Doris Armstrong make the team? Yes, this is a very great question, right? So, Mike, do you have him on your 53, Doris Armstrong? I, I I would love to have him on 53, but no one's covering this guy. Like, there's nothing coming out, no interviews from him, nothing, you know, not even a tweet saying, oh, well, I think on Sunday David Hellman uh, didn't know if it was him or another guy that got a sack. Um, but I, – Maybe I don't. I don't know. I, mean, I haven't heard of anything. Yeah, yeah. There's it's been silent on on that. So, does he make it just based off a uh, veteran, a veteran player? I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, for me, I think it's going to come down between him and Joe Jackson. So, for my money, if it's one of those two, I think they keep Armstrong. Joe Jackson might not make it here, you know, but they might try to sneak him on to. The practice squad. Now, Joe Jackson did start some games for us early on uh, last season, so he does have some games under his belt. How much did he improve, though? Neither of these guys that would really hear much about them, like you said, Mike. So, a little bit I'll, quiet I'll, on them. I, when I see Dorrance Armstrong last year at training camp, he's probably the biggest guy on the team. The guy's yeah, he, arms is bigger than my head. Yeah, yeah, definitely very powerful. We do see that from him. John Francis, what about Cedric Wilson? I think he may have had the best camp because of the unknown. Yeah, Cedric Wilson really stepped it up, Mike. You know, we, we heard Dak talk about Cedric Wilson saying that that he uh, when he showed up to his house to to work out with him, uh, even Amari Cooper really said that uh, he noticed a physical change, you know, uh, looking the part. And hopefully that, that'll uh, help his durability, Mike. Yeah, ho yeah. I mean, I'm sure there was a physical cha uh, change because he wasn't, all beat up and injured, you know, it, best ability is availability, Joe. And uh, that's what's been plaguing six. We know the talent was there. We called it a steal in the sixth round a couple of years ago. And uh, that injury bug, hopefully it's off his back. And bye-bye, Devin Smith. Yeah. Donald Jenkins, Witten, been holding back his backup since day one. He hated being replaced. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Witten just, you know, whenever they brought him in, they they were saying, you know, what what was his snap count going to be? And, and it was, you know, he took those numbers back. So you got it's it's good to uh, it's good to see him move on, you know. And the Cowboys they had to they had to tear that bandaid off and see what we got. And 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 the good thing about it, 
you will find out if Jarwin is the answer. That is, that is one thing that you will find out this season. Okay, we all think he's going to be. He's looking really good, looking really sharp in camp. But let's see where we at. Eight games in the season. All right. Let let's me see. ask you this, Joe: Are you are you looking at his catch radius? Or are you looking at his blocking? As far as what is, uh, well, you, we will, you know, we're, we're saying he looks really good in camp. We hear that he's doing good in camp. Yeah. We know he wasn't a good blocker. So yeah. has he developed that step into becoming a good blocker? Because, you know, you got to, you know, you got to catch and you got to block. I have, I have seen some reports where he has improved the blocking, which is good, but yeah, he's still a passing guy, a Y, a Y receiver. So, um, a Y tight end, excuse me. So running the same similar routes as Jason Witten, but he's got more speed. He can get downfield. He was a former wide receiver, so he does have that speed that, that Witten just didn't have. So uh, it'll be interesting. But for blocking, yeah, I, I think it's still, you know, it, it could be better. You know, and I think that's why we'll see more of Schultz, more Blake Bell, the Bell Dozer. Hmm. The Guru. Has Tristan Hill outperformed Crawford in camp? Based on what we've heard, should Hill or Crawford start at three tech versus the Rams? Well, Hill's been getting snaps at the one. Crawford's been getting snaps at the three and at the right end position. I mean, that's what you get out of Crawford. You get that versatility there. Um, you know, when Gerald McCoy went down, the guru, Hill came in. They gave him the opportunities, and he's taken advantage of them. Um, but I don't know if I could say he built, he outperformed Crawford just because it's a different position. What do you think, Joe? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say that he has uh, Crawford not hearing too much about him. I mean, I, I think it's more of a, he's just a veteran and and he's doing he's doing what he's always done in, in previous camps. But you, you're definitely hearing more pop, more things in, in the reports about Tristan Hill than you are uh, Tyron Crawford. So for sure. Will he start over Crawford and, and versus the Rams? I say, I say yes. I say put him in there. Obviously, they'll have some uh, rotation in there, but go with the best player. Let's let's go with let's go with these young guys. All right, so I'm I'm all about it, man. Let, let, and I want to find out for sure. You know, I I've been saying this for the last couple episodes that I, I as much as I do love what Tristan Hill has done in training camp, training camp all star, you could say now. Let's see it continue into the regular season. I, I don't want him to, to, to take the foot off the pedal and, and then he's, he reverts back to what he was. We don't want that, right? We want him to keep stacking those performances into the regular season. All right. What else we got in here, guys? Appreciate everybody here. Just join the live chat and everything. We're, at, we're answering some questions here. Let's see what else we got in here. Stevie Mac, we already have our bruiser back. Zeke Elliott, that's right. That's right. That that's that's our thunder. That's our thunder. The lunatic comes in here. We open versus the Rams and their pair of eleven hundred uh, yard receivers, Cooper Cup and Robert. I think he says. I think he means Robert Woods, right? Do you think Diggs won't start only because he is a rookie? Um, I think there's a uh, there's a good chance that that Diggs does start this game. Uh, you're just hearing too much good from him. He's playing better than Worley. He's playing better than than uh, Anthony Brown, from what we can tell. So, uh, for me, I, I, you know, you're gonna have to get get his uh, feet wet, put him to the fire, and I think it's a good test right off the bat. So, Cooper Cut, more of the slot guy. I think the guy that's gonna really have to cover him is gonna be. Uh, it could be Anthony Brown in the slot if Jordan Lewis isn't back, which I don't know if, they, if Jordan Lewis will be back. So. It'll be interesting to see what the uh, formation will be there. But, uh, yeah, and Cooper Cup, he's already hurt. <laughs> he's already he's already shown up on the injury report, and that's his game. He's an injury-prone player. All you got to do is smack him around a little bit, and he probably won't even finish the game. So, yeah, uh, they, they have some issues there. You know, they got rid of uh, Brandon Cooks. They got rid of uh, uh, some of these other guys that, that were the high-end players. You know, I think they – it's starting to catch up to them. I think it'll be a competitive game, but um, Mike, I, I think Diggs has a legit shot at starting in this game. Mike, what do you think? I do, um, and it, it and I and it all depends if, if they play nickel and or dime. You know, because if they play nickel, that means five cor- five DBs, right? 
And then if they play dime, that means six DBs. So it, it depends on, you know, how they start this thing out, you know, nickel, dime or whatever. Uh, but I, I, you'll see a lot of digs, even if he's not starting, because I have a feeling because they have a lot of good cover corners, you could play a lot of nickel and a lot of dime and still be productive on defense. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Let's see what else we got here in the in the Marvel Great. You tripped on Tristan Hill will never be better than Crawford. I don't know, man. What has Crawford done that that, that makes you want to say that? I mean, he he does have some some games under his belt. It doesn't wow me though. I mean, he he's been a uh, a reliable player at some point. Too beat up, man. You know, and uh, it, it is what it is. Mike, what what's your thoughts on? Tristan Hill will never be better than Crawford. I, I just, I just can't agree with that. You know, I, I, I'm sorry, Wink. I, I, I don't agree with that. Well, I, I think because the, the expectation for Tristan Hill was there, right? He was a second round pick, um, and you know he didn't get those snaps. He didn't perform. Tyron Crawford was on IR last year, dealing with hip issues. You know, I, I think it's fair ball game, and this year is going to tell who's better, Crawford or Hill. Yeah. Um, because both of them got a clean slate. Both of them really never even played last year. So it's hard to judge heel when you barely even seen them. So both of them got a, a clean slate, but best believe we'll pick this question back up after the Super Bowl. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a good one to follow up with, Wink. So when we do follow up, you will be the first to, to hear from us. <laughs> okay, buddy? <laughs> Appreciate the question, man. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, Cooper Cup dinged up. Yeah, that, that's his game. Injury prone. Injury prone. Uh, let's see what we got here. DeGuru. Why has Blake Bell been silent in camp? Been hearing more tight ends such as Schultz and Cole Hikutini than Bell in camp. So this might be part of the reason why they may. Okay, so Archer had two running backs, if you remember, in, in the report we did earlier. Zeke and Pollard. Uh, uh, Shewo, the fullback from TCU. You didn't hear much about him. I'm not sure that he's ready to go. So they may use a halfback type of tight end, and I think that's where you're going to get really your uh, your Blake Bell in that type of uh, situation, blocking for uh, Zeke, Tony Pollard, and he can catch too. Good in short distance, but, man, yeah, uh, Dalton Schultz, Mike, really coming on. This has been like I think he's really stepped up his game. Uh, you're hearing a lot from him. Cole Hikatini, I think he's more of a practice squad candidate right now. I know they want to get him back on the team. No, I mean, you took what I was going to say right out of my mouth. Couldn't couldn't disagree. I 1,000% agree. That's, that's what we got, man. That's what we got. Mike, I'll let you take this one here. Capital City Music, man. Do you think we need a speed receiver to take the top off? Hmm. C.D. Lamb's not speed. Cedric Wilson isn't speed. I think we already have it. What do you think? Um. Yeah, I think speed. You know, I, nowadays speed is four three. Whatever, right? I think you know if you're running a four, a four four, whatever, four forty, that's pretty fast. But for speed, you know, like a rugs, these kinds of guys. Uh, Devin Smith was that. You know, it's definitely a luxury for the Cowboys. I think this might be something that they do address in a future draft. You know, that that's definitely not out of the realm. Um, I think you do have a lot of speed there with Tony Pollard, who will line up in the slot and will. He's going to hurt these uh, linebackers. I can tell you that right now, uh, the way that they're going to line him up there. So, yeah, you know, could we use one for sure? You know, I definitely can't say no. You know, you can always use speed because speed kills. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tony Pollard is a 4-5, um, 4-5-2. C.D. Lamb's a 4-5-1, and Cedric Wilson is a is a 4-5-5. So they're pretty neck and neck on that speed. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. They, they play a lot faster than what they were timed. So uh, it'll be interesting. Mike, will Alden Smith start? Mm, good question. Really good question because, again, we we don't even know what this hybrid defense is going to look like. And it, in order to get the start, 
name, right? You got to play the first snap of the game in order to get that that snap, you know, that that starter name or whatever it's called. So I don't know. It's it's hard to say because it depends on what defense they play first. And we haven't seen anything of defensive plays or offensive plays coming out of this camp, but I can see him starting. Yeah, it, it, it's more um... – I think he'll, you know, definitely start in the game. But as far as like the very first snap of the game, uh, if if that's what we're calling a starter, you know, you, yeah, you, you don't know. But yeah, he's going to get his snaps for sure. You know, and, and like you said, different formations rotating there with uh, Everson Griffin. So he's definitely going to gonna be a, a big part of, of what they want to do. Uh, you know, they want to stand him up, rush him that way. Uh, we've seen that. So, yeah, I think he's definitely going to get his uh his roster, I mean, his his snaps. The guru, will Luke Gifford make the 53 roster by default? He's hurt yet again, and what has he done stand out in camp? Um, Is he hurt? I, I didn't hear that he was hurt. I haven't hurt. heard. No, I haven't heard that he's hurt. Yeah, we may have to get clarification on that. I haven't heard he's hurt, but uh, I do have him making the 53. You know, maybe Mike can check that while we're looking at some of this here. I'll go ahead and comment on this. Solomon Jernigan, I'm ready to see Jalen use more like Khalil Mack. You hit it right on the head, Solomon Jernigan, and um, and this will happen. You know, uh, Mike Nolan has already talked to Jalen Smith as far as how he wants to utilize him, and Jalen Smith said that that it's going back to his Notre Dame roots. You know, I, I did a video, if you guys missed that, check that in, in my past videos about how they're going to utilize Jalen Smith in this defense. Uh, you know, obviously, with the beef that we have at defensive tackle, he will be able to roam and hit those A-gaps with ferocity. But what he did at Notre Dame, coming off the edge, you know, he, he gives you a little bit of that boost. Very athletic. He's very fast. He's probably your fastest linebacker out there, maybe even on, on defense. So look for them to utilize that speed rush that Jalen Smith can bring to the table. Okay, so, yeah, I'm with you on that, So. I'm, uh, journey again, so I'm ready to see it, and I think we will see that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm not seeing anything about Luke Gifford being injured, Joe. Yeah, I, I I hadn't heard anything on that either. Let's see. Keep going through these comments here. Appreciate everybody that has joined us live. Everybody in the comments, appreciate all you guys. Got a lot of great comments in here. Trying to get through them all. Great comments, guys. Keep them coming. Great comments, man. Huh? Michael Beers, God bless you. Mike and Joe, appreciate you, Michael. We see you. We see you in the in the chat box regularly. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. God bless yeah. you, Michael Beers. Let's see, Michael Hurst. What are the chances the Cowboys go after Vice left tackle if he's waived tomorrow for insurance props? I think they did waive him, right? We're talking about Riley Reef. Uh, he signed a a big extension, so he wouldn't be cheap. Uh, by any means, I think if you were to sign a Riley Reef, he is 31 years old. Um, that's not old for an offensive lineman in this day and age. So, um, but you do have to go back and look at some injury history. What what is the reason why was it was it just a cap number? Are they trying to, you know, protect themselves for 2021? Need to look a little bit more into it. Um, I don't know if Riley Reef has a, a bad injury history, but you know he is a, he was one of the top tackles in the league for a while you know he's got some pro bowls under his belt uh pretty good player him that's why he got that big extension so well, well he, on, uh, he, he's staying with the vikings they agreed to restructure a deal so okay. he yeah so he, he's not even on the market okay so you can scratch riley reef off the list uh, that's smart on their part uh, if they were gonna wave him kirk cousins wow <laughs> he would be in more trouble than he already is you know <laughs> he's he's already just, all you gotta do is touch him he'll throw an interception I uh, know yeah yeah DeGuru you're right he, he did restructure his contract with the Vikings uh, that's true we should have kept Tevin Austin Tevin Austin did have the speed but he just could not get on the field so that's that was he was just a wasted roster spot man I, I wish the guy would have been more durable. He definitely would have been somebody you would want to keep, you know. Uh, but the Cowboys, they, they, they seem to have, 
you know, this uh, this thing with a Lance Dunbar, Tev, and all just these guys that, that show potential with speed, but never healthy enough to really tie everything together. So uh, that's a shame on Tevin Austin. He did sign with, I think, the 49ers. So good luck there. Um, let's see if he can stay healthy over there, but not when we play them. All right. When we play them, he's going to fumble the ball and uh, we're going to get after him. All right. Oh, Tavon Austin. God, yeah. I wish you could stay. Yeah, man, those hamstrings are just killing. Him. I think his hamstrings are worse than Sean Lee's, to be honest. <laughs> Pollard, 4 3 speed. Yeah, Pollard, uh, very, very fast, very, very quick. I think that's the thing, man. He's just so elusive. Yeah, the Reaper, fast and quick. Exactly. That, that's the perfect description on Pollard. Fast and quick, man. Elusive. I love it. Starting on third down. And eight sack by Alden Smith. Lamb ran a four five. He's not a burner. We got Devin Smith who ran a four four two. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, that's I mean, that's what we're saying, you know. Four fours, these kinds of numbers, they were that was really fast back in the day, but you know, with with how these athletes are really, you know, you know, coming into these programs, you're seeing a lot more four three guys lately so it's just interesting you know where when we talk about speed that number seems to go lower now it's a sub 440 so um that's really where the speed is at let's see what we got here uh, we got some great commentary in here uh, leaf has soft injury yeah so maybe that's where the confusion was um yeah sean lee mike Soft tissue mm. injury already, you know, uh, but this, this is not a surprise anymore. And, and for the Cowboys and fans, you hear about it and you're like, oh, that, well, it's Sean Lee, right? But, uh, you know, you do got to feel that this is the final ride for Sean Lee, Mike. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I talked, you know, about Sean Lee on Sunday and, you know, I kind of Cowboy fans respectively got, you know, upset with me, but it's the truth. You know, if Francis Bernard is playing at this level and he can continue playing at this level, Sean Lee's on the bubble or just an emergency stash. That's that it. Would, yeah. That would definitely be one of those surprise cuts, right? When you talk about a surprise cut, I think you think about players like a Sean Lee, a Tyron Crawford. Um, who else, who else comes to mind as, as far as what would be a surprise cut? Those two for me are, are the top ones, right? Yeah. Anthony Brown would be a surprise cut after giving him that extension. I think, I th yeah, I think he's good. I think he's good. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, Riley Reef. Here we go. Asmodos or Asmodo. Earl Thomas or Eric Reed. <laughs> Darian Thompson and Xavier Woods, please. Yeah. Now, if 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 it's a gun to my head, uh, who would I take? I take Earl Thomas. Okay. So. Um, uh, uh, yeah. If there was a gun in my head, Earl Thomas. Yeah, Earl Thomas all the way. But still, nobody has picked them up yet. Uh, you got you gotta you gotta take that into a, uh, consideration. I think the word might be out on that. Um, so we'll see, man. We'll see. Solomon Jernigan. Mike, how effective is Jalen Smith going to be on the edge? Man, you, you asked the wrong guy. You know, this guy right here, Joe, is the <laughs> Notre Dame of Notre Dame fans. You know, yeah. just as much as he is passionate about the Cowboys, he's right there with Notre Dame. And, I mean, he's seen Jalen Smith rush off the edge. I mean, that was his, that was his bread and butter at Notre Dame, was rushing, getting to the quarterback. And I, I, I really think he's going to be just fine. Yeah, I, I think he's going to be explosive. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. That that speed is is really what 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 gets it, man. He he'll hit that hole, and it's gonna be beautiful, man. I, I think for both these linebackers, you know, if they they always talk about a little slump in the numbers when they talk about Jalen and when they talk about uh, the Marcus Thorns, but man, it's just uh, it's a byproduct of of having a bad season, right? These guys really weren't bad. There was no slump. Jalen's numbers. Even last year, were really high top top of the uh, tackles, you know. And then Demarcus Lawrence, sack numbers may not have been as high, but very productive in run defense, you know. A, a lot of people, you know, generally speaking, 
they kind of forget about that part of uh, DeMarcus Lawrence's game is the run defense. And what I love, Mike, about this defense, you have two mm. of these guys now. Everson Griffin plays the run really well. DeMarcus Lawrence, we're going to start stuffing runs a lot more, more than yeah. ever. I, I can't wait for that. Man. And see, that that's where DeMarcus Lawrence don't give, get a lot of credit is, I mean, the guy's one hell of a run stopper. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt, man. Let's see what else we got in here, guys. Appreciate everybody that has joined live. These are great comments and questions, man. You guys come with it. Really great. Do love these. Here's one from the Guru Mike. How many cornerbacks and safeties will we be keeping? Uh, who was on the bubble in the secondary for you, Mike? Who is on the bubble at secondary? Oh. You know, it's I, – I, I, mean, I mean, there's a lot of players right now. Um, but if I'm going to talk, talk like starter, potential starter, I'll go with um, – man, that's hard to say, actually. Um, Ha-Ha Clinton Dix, maybe? You know, I mean, he's really – I mean, he lost the job to Darian Thompson. Um, you know, he's filling in for Xavier Woods right now. So I don't really think he has a place on this roster. Yeah, it's almost like you said. Like if if Woods was if Woods was healthy, I think he would be more of a bubble player for sure. You know, and that's uh, you know, but that that's not a bad thing because that means that you you feel good about what you have there. So Donovan Wilson could be in that mix. You know, um, he started out really strong in, in training camp, and he did, and he was still making plays. So. Let's not sleep on Donovan Wilson, but uh, for bubble player on the secondary, yeah, I, I think that uh, if I had to pick a player, um, I, I would probably say the same thing, Mike. I'd probably say Clinton Dix. Yeah. The Lunatic, question for the Frisco Report. If you could bring any former Cowboys defensive player, not Primer Haley, and add them to the squad, who would it be? Who, who can I go first? Yeah, go for it. Everson Walls. The guy had 11 interceptions in one year. I think that was his rookie year, 1981 or something like that. Give me Everson Walls. The guy was a playmaker. And to have him on, just to, I guess I wasn't born in 81, but just to see that type of caliber player play, picking off Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. These guys, it'd be great to see. Give me Everson Walls with that 11 interceptions. Yeah, Everson Walls, a hell of a career, man. Uh, one of your Cowboys players, you know, I think he's going to be on the Cowboys' top 60. They're breaking that down on their website right now. He has to be on that top 60. We'll see what happens there. Uh, for me, the Lunatic, I'm going to go with the defensive tackle, Leroy Glover. I love when, when he was here with the Cowboys – you know, they got him from the Saints back in the day. Very disruptive. Had very a lot of sack production at that uh, defensive tackle position. Uh, something that we've actually been missing <laughs> since he left. You know, we I think Jason Hatcher maybe, you know, here a few seasons ago got sack production from the defensive tackle position. But before that, it was Leroy Glover, man. I, I loved what he did. Obviously, Parcells came in here. Uh, kept them for a season, and then they, you know, kind of phased them out. Jason Ferguson took over there, nose tackle. But Leroy Glover, can you imagine him on this defense for right now? That speed, sack ability, wow. What about you, Delunatic? Let let us know in the comment box, man. Who who would you bring back, man? Appreciate the question. I think Everson Walls. I think he. Only had like one year, one or two years without an interception. Other than that, he's had interceptions. Man, that Everson Walls was a beast. Yeah, the guru Alexander Wright reportedly ran a four and one. Dude, I remember Alexander Wright. Uh, so this guy, all the speed in the world, couldn't catch for anything. I remember Alexander Wright. Yeah, I'll never forget that name there. That's a name I have not heard in a very long time. Oh, the lunatic said no DeMarcus Ware. In interesting. And I'm going to tell you, I loved DeMarcus Ware. But 
when you need when when I, when I just broke this down about Everson Griffin, when the lungs are pink, who can get you a sack in the fourth quarter? I can only really name one time D. Ware got us a sack in the fourth quarter. That was 2009 in the Superdome against the Saints. That was maybe his only fourth quarter sack. I, all the rest of the, like 120 sacks came in between the first, second, and maybe the third quarter, Joe. I would still, I would still take, I would still take the markers. That 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 is a good one, um, but I was looking more further back. You know what I mean? I didn't want to go with the obvious prime Haley, the Marcus Ware, but yeah, yeah, uh, the lunatic. Uh, yeah, definitely, that would be a, a good choice there. I love ninety four though. Don't get me wrong. Appreciate the but, donation, brother. Appreciate you, Space Cowboy in the house. Space Cowboy in the house. Make sure you guys sub up to him. He's got great content over there. Space Cowboy 17. Haley 94 where? I'd keep Lee as a mentor for Gifford and Bernard. Your thoughts? Absolutely. And I think that's where his career arc is going to go. I think he's going to go from coach. This Even this year, he might be a player slash coach. You know what I mean? But I think he's on that trajectory to be a coach in this league. Maybe some other Cowboys bring back. I mean, Jalen Smith has already attributed a lot of his, uh, you know, uh, things that he's learned from Sean Lee, Leighton Randerish as well. I think he's an integral part of uh, these guys' maturation. You know, you got to have somebody, some of these players, they, they kind of need a little bit of that. And I think that uh, Sean Lee has has helped these guys develop into what they are right now. Our, these guys were already great players. You bring in the mix here with Sean Lee, somebody that's really good at evaluating tape. And studying uh, makes these guys play a lot faster, you know, when they're when they have the preparation locked down. Lee, as a coach, I could see it. I mean, he's already doing it basically. I mean, he's just looking like a caveman in a sweatshirt right now, you know, teaching these guys. So I could see that. Yeah, he's looking pretty grizzled. <laughs> Oh, I love this one here. Cleveland Brown, good to see you in the chat box, brother. Woodson is also my choice in Deion Sanders. <laughs> Goodbye, opposition. Number one receiver. Yeah, Darren Woodson. Yeah, great, great choice. And another player that really is, is getting skipped over in the Hall of Fame. It's become very annoying to me that the you know these committees continue to look over. Darren Woodson has some of the best credentials that are out there. You know, you can line him up with some of the best that have already gotten in there. Brian Dawkins just got in. I think he's better than him. Three Super Bowl rings, captain of the defense. Heck of a player, man. I love Darren Woodson, dude. I, I, I he's, he's just a really, really good person on and off the field. I love that guy. Yeah, real good guy. I watched him on a few YouTube channels when he's he's done some late night hype with a few, few YouTube guys here. Um, you know, nice guy. Um, yeah, definitely a Hall of Fame snub. Yeah, yeah, hopefully he'll get in. Randy White or too tall. Um, I was, I, I think I have to go with, with too tall Jones. I think that guy just had a lot of swagger to him. Uh, dabbled a little bit into the boxing, uh, the height. <laughs> I mean, it, it was a fun player for the Cowboys. I, I, I like too tall, but Randy White as well. The Manster. You got to love him. You got to love the Manster. Indeed. Great question. Mike, hmm. who, would you, who would you start opposite Cheeto Awuzie? That's a really good question. He's a high draft picks. You know, he's wearing number 31. I would say start them, you know, get, get your second round investment out there. 51 overall, get him out there. The only way he's going to learn is by playing. Yeah. I think he's ready. I think he's ready, man. I think he's got the chops for space. Cowboy 17. Appreciate the uh, donation, brother. Love the content guys. Keep it up. Make sure you guys hit up space. Cowboy 17. Great content. Great work out there, guys. Absolutely. 1,000% agree with you, Joe. Josh Rodriguez. Might we be related? No, but I'm just kidding. We need Earl Thomas. Do you really think that Thompson is good? We're going to be looking for safety during the season. 
Yeah, you see, yeah, Darian Thompson, and, and a, a lot of us are kind of have the same sentiment that uh, as good it is, as it is to hear that Darian Thompson is beating out Clinton Dix, as far as a long-term answer, combos are still messing around with the position. That's why I have Merig from TCU as my first uh, pick in 2021. Go Make sure you guys check that video out. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, man. If, if anybody signs Earl Thomas, maybe they don't. Maybe you can. Maybe that number comes down even lower. Maybe you can get him on a very cheap deal. Thanks for the question, Josh. Yeah, Darren Woodson, the boss of bosses. Let's see what else we got in here, guys. Yeah, Diggs, opposite of Woozy. Absolutely, I do agree with that. I think he's ready to rock and roll. Uh, they're worried about Coop too. Yeah, um, it, it, it is something to, to monitor, you know, to say that it's not an issue or to relax. You know, you're always going to have the fan says, relax, relax. And I hate that relax fan. No, look into it, right? <laughs> something into it. You, you know what really drove me crazy last season, Mike, when we lost a game or two here early on in the season and you get the fan says, it's early in the season. Relax. No, man. I'm not relaxing. <laughs> I'm I'm with you, Robbie. I, I agree. Yeah, let, let's see what happens. Hopefully, it's nothing. But yeah, I am um, I am worried about Coop, man. You know, he's pulled himself out of games last year. Uh, you know, not 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 uh what I'm expecting out of my guy that just got a a new extension. Yeah, so there's something to keep an eye on, you know, and we'll, we'll find out, you know. First, first few games for sure, man. If if there's some issues here, it's gonna, it'll come up real quick. We want, we'll we'll have some clarification on it. Leon Lett, still got some people answering here. Bill Bates, absolutely, man. Bill Bates was just an awesome safety and one of the great special teams players the Cowboys ever had. Loved Bill Bates. Loved Bill Bates, man. I th- I think you got a Rodriguez in your chat, and you also got a Puro Sanchez in your chat, too. I think we might be related. <laughs> <laughs> Can Francis Bernard play outside in case Sean Lee? Um, uh, he did play that a little bit there at Utah, um, but uh, you got to be careful with Francis Bernard. The uh, the, the long-range speed is, is not there. I think he's more of your get-in-the-scrum player. He can sit in the zone and get interceptions, so... Um, it's something to watch, you know what I mean? But uh, Franz Bernard, they like to have versatility there with their linebackers. He's going to give you depth. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that one there. Ivan Sanchez, appreciate you, brother. One of my longtime subscribers, Ivan Sanchez. Joe the Goat Rodriguez, hyped as fuck <laughs> for the season. Beep. Yeah, F relaxing. Yes, sir, man. We're not about relaxing and, and taking it easy. Now, the expectations are high, right? And if you lose a game early in the season, I'm not relaxing. Nobody should relax. A loss is a loss, right? Nobody wants to lose. Yeah, yeah you wait You wait too damn long for 17 games because the 17 games go by like that. So you always got to be hyped. And th- and that was the that was the thing about Jason Garrett that you you would you would lose some of these games early on and then they would make that push at the end of the season right but then it was like you didn't you know if you would have you know taken care of business on some of these close games at the beginning of the season you wouldn't be in this we got to win the final game on the road at Philadelphia type situation Correct. yeah Fight. yeah they, yeah let, good riddance with that <laughs> good riddance with that I don't want any more close games. No more close games. Let's let's hammer people. Let's hammer people, everybody. Appreciate you, Ivan. Thank you, brother. Great question right here, Mike. I'll let you take this one. This will be very interesting. Will Tony Romo get into the Hall of Fame? Oh. Oh. You know, that's a that's a good that's a good question. I mean, the stats are there, right? The wins and losses are there, you know, you know, the, the unforthcoming fourth quarter interceptions that he's had, but he had a lot of comebacks too. people, people forget about all those comebacks. It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. I I think 
I, I mean, the, the stats are there. I mean, the Cowboys records are there. Um, it's, it's, I think, ring of honor before Hall of Fame. Yeah, there's no doubt that Jerry's going to put him in the ring of honor. Hall of Fame on the other question, you know, there are a couple of uh, quarterbacks that do have Super Bowl credentials that are not in the Hall of Fame. Jim Plunkett, the great Jim Plunkett uh, from the Raiders, has a Super Bowl ring, is not in the Hall of Fame. Okay, um, and there, there's a couple of others, obviously. I mean, look at um, uh, Trent Dilfer. I mean, he has a Super Bowl ring, an average quarterback. He's not in the Hall of Fame, and I don't think he should be. But for Romo, no Super Bowl rings. Like you said, he has all the stats, wins, very iconic franchise with the Cowboys. Is it enough? What do the voters think? Because that's really what it comes down to. The, these voters, you never know where they're going to go. I mean, they're – they're they're taking their sweet time. God bless Drew Pearson. He's finally getting in. But man, you just never know where these voters are gonna go. You know, Michael Irvin, you know, they passed on him a couple of times. Charles Haley took him a long time to get in. So I don't know, man. Sometimes I think there's a little bit of bias from these voters when it comes to Cowboys players. So absolutely, he's definitely not a shoe in. He'll be in the conversation, but yeah, that's gonna be a hard one. That's that's a great question, man. I yeah, appreciate that, brother. What do you guys think? Let us know in the chat box. Do you think Tony Romo is a Hall of Fame player? Will he get into it? Let us know. There's already a few no's in here. There's one H-E double hockey sticks no for Romo going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and, and obviously you do have that fan base just like we do with Dak Prescott. <laughs> you have the ones that loved him. You have the ones that, that hated him. So, you know, um, Harvey Martin, great player. Yeah, absolutely. But Romo I'll retired. tell you this. Yeah. When Romo retires from broadcasting, he will be a Hall of Famer for broadcasting, and his career will his career highlights will be on there. So either way, if he continues his broadcasting up, he's going to the Hall of Fame. The Guru, what NFL teams on our 2020 schedule were you the most? The ones that really stand out to me, Mike, the Ravens, 49ers, and uh, who else, man? Ravens, 49ers. I'm trying to think what, what other teams really come to mind. Because I did have the Cowboys going 14-2 and two in my early, early prediction. All right. I do believe in these guys. I do believe in them. Maybe the Seahawks. Maybe. That will be Maybe. a good test. It's, it's, and, it's at the tw- and it's at Seattle. The Seahawks are always a problem, and that's week three on the road. Will they have fans? Are they going to pump in? Okay, this. <laughs> are they going to pump in all that earthquake seismic? Uh, you know, you know where they break out the seismic reader to see the 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 loudness of the crowd. They're going to pump up that level of a crowd noise. I think the NFL did mandate a certain degree of uh, decibels. You can't go over a certain amount of decibels supposedly <laughs> all right so we'll see if all these teams abide by that decibel rule i'm pretty sure uh teams will have their little decibel clickers to make sure teams are not overdoing it and it, it probably will happen somewhere <laughs> i'm already ready for it somebody's gonna report it you know yeah will it be the cheatriots that do it maybe they do it yeah maybe uh, interesting. Uh, NFC East games, those are always a challenge. We host the Steelers in week nine. That's going to be a hell of a game. That's always uh, a robbery. Yeah, that's yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun, uh, the Guru. But the ones that they give us the most, um, you know, litmus tests with the Ravens. 49ers, if they can, you know, do what they did last season, that's a great litmus test. So uh, those are, are really good. Pittsburgh. On the road at Minnesota, week 11, that's going to be a good one. Uh, and I would say that's about it, man. I think those are the ones that really stick out in my mind, Mike. Everson Griffin is going to have a monstrous day at the, at the Vikings, November 22nd. You best believe. You best believe. You best believe. Do you believe, everybody? Do you believe what the Cowboys are going to do this season? Okay, what is the over and under on the Cowboys winning – Nine games. Under over. or over? Over nine. 
Let us know, guys. Are they gonna are the Cowboys gonna win more than nine games this season? Or are they gonna go less? Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat box. Mike Mike McCarthy brings that discipline. He brings that football winning mindset. Everything we're gonna do is about winning. 16, 16 games, 16 wins. All right. Don't play with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. And I love it, man. I love everybody that's in the chat box. Everybody that has joined us tonight. Great comments. Great discussion with you guys, as usual. Shout out to everyone that uh, showed up tonight. Okay, I think we'll wrap it up there, Mike. And uh, yeah, I think we, we will wrap it up there, guys, and we will be back next week unless something crazy breaks <laughs> during the week. You know, we, we, we might come back for something like that. But uh, Oh, we can go over the roster on Sunday. We can do another Sunday special before the last Sunday before football. Yeah. Yeah, guys, that, that's something that we might do, actually. That's a good idea, Mike. So, yeah, let's let's lock that in. Let's do a uh, post, you know, 53 final cuts. We'll, we'll come here live with you guys, and we'll see where the waiver wire lands. We'll see what who's on the practice squad, and we'll break it down, guys. So, yeah, great idea, Mike. Yeah, we will be back, guys, on Sunday, Sunday night. We'll break it down. Uh and that kind of thing. So we, we really do appreciate everybody that joined us tonight. Everybody in the chat box, shout out to all you guys. All the super chats, appreciate all you guys. Can't do it without you. Mike, let everybody know where they can find you if they haven't already. Absolutely. You go to thefriscoreport.com, click on the YouTube link there, or you can follow me uh, at on, on Twitter at underscore Cowboys Corner. The link's right there in, in the uh, – what do you call that biography little box or what? I don't know what it's called, but links there too. Um, so give me a follow. Give me a mention. Give me a DM. Thank you all you guys for consistently being in here. Every Frisco report. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on Sunday. Yes. Yeah. It's always fun. Uh, so that's where we're at guys. I will be back here on, on the channel um, probably tomorrow, Thursday to give my final 53 man predictions. Come back and check out that video. And we'll be back with the Frisco Report analyzing the cuts. It's going to be fun. A lot of news is going to come from this. All right. Let's see if there's any surprise cuts and, and things like that. So do appreciate you. Do appreciate you, Wink, for the questions. Everybody that had a great question tonight, I appreciate you. If we didn't get to you, we'll try to get to you next week. But that's all we have right now, guys. Peace.